back at it again. ADB's news show, Monday to Friday, bringing you news that's keep you engaged, informed, and reacting in the most optimal way for your business, investment, and entrepreneurial activity. Today is the 29th of April. Let's talk about it. We have uh, some news uh, going on that, um, you know, May 1st is Labor Day. Um, now, for folks who aren't aware in Haiti, uh, our Labor Day is May 1st. And uh, it's a celebration, it's a holiday celebrated in many countries uh, on that date, celebration of spring and also workers, right? And, and, but very often uh, in, in countries, it's usually taken as a day to also express the right of the worker vis-a-vis -vis the conditions that they may be living in. And Haiti is no exception. And we do have something going on across the country. We have textile workers in particular that are going to be in protest. Um, we, if you're aware, we did have uh, on the first uh, of earlier this month in April, just this month, we had an increase of the minimum wage for textile workers from about 350 good to about 750 good uh, per day, right? Uh, but that fell short of what they originally were asking, demanding, because originally they were demanding 1500 good per day. That is truly what would be in line with the increases of inflation and additionally the general cost of living and the opportunity to actually gain wealth rather than uh, live uh, day to day per what they've expressed. Uh, so they're still hitting the streets despite uh, a win, all right? Despite a win, there's just, you know, we have workers hitting the streets from Port-au-Prince to Guatemala and uh, demanding a thousand uh, good uh, per, per day increase in their base salary. Uh, we've had, we have some, some other reasons why they're protesting as well, particularly the folks who want to met. The DG have been much more uh, aggressively enforcing something that they weren't really before, which is the taxes that um, are taken out the salary, the 10% and the 1% and the, and the for social security income. And then additionally added one more thing, which is uh, a tax on social services and improvement for the area that they're in, the area where I'm in. Uh, they're not, a lot of folks are not too happy about that because ultimately that represents an almost 30% increase. That's 2,500 good, which is almost a 30%, uh, not 30% increase, but 30% of their salary, right? And given that there is a genuine feeling, genuine reality that the Haitian government doesn't do nearly as much as it should to improve the conditions of, the, of its citizens and the people living there, uh, there is a, very large pushback uh, against that side, against that uh, the, the DG really clamping down on uh, on the on the tax that they say that these folks are, are should be providing, and so we have a dual a dual reason uh, why folks are hitting the streets and and um, and expressing uh, their disfavor. Now this adds additional pressure pressure to the textile worker companies and firms and investors because uh, it's been it's been a heck of a heck of a you know past month or two for them of course starting with the 7th February protests where the country was just shut down for a week week and a half additionally uh, this massive un, un really out of nowhere uh, increase in the minimum wage uh, in some in some cases of 80 percent um, for for many of the, for many of the staff uh, that they employ um, is, is a tr is a very large increase in their cost base that they weren't seeing, and already we saw some companies talking about uh, lowering their uh, reinvestment procedures and and and, re and hiring and growth in the country, um, and additionally uh, we've had uh, Port Lafito has been closed for the past three days, and we've had. Uh, some companies that use Port Lafito to export their products, unable to, to get their stuff out. So we, we've seen delays. And then finally, there's been a protest going on at the MC, uh, uh, Minister of Commerce and Industry. Uh, and it's a, that's a big deal because a lot of these companies, um, they have to get uh, written documentation from that particular uh, Haitian government bureau to validate that their goods and products are actually uh, were made in Haiti, so they can when they get to the U.S., uh, they can receive the, the special textile uh, benefits that 
are owed to them because of the agreement uh, and, and treaty that exists between the Haitian government and the U.S., particularly for textile workers and, and uh, sorry, textile products and textile products entering the, the country. So for the, and this is one of, for the past week. So for the past week, um, you, they've been unable to get that proper documentation to be able to export their products because of the, the, the current strike that's ongoing. And there really hasn't been any word on whether and when that strike is going to stop and, 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 res, and, and services are going to resume. So again, you've had all these factors that have been really pounding away at the te textile sector, uh, in addition to the genuine you know, difficulty of doing business in the country. And I have to tell you, for an industry that's supposed to be very important and, and very integral to uh, growth and employment in the country, uh, it hasn't been good. It hasn't been good from uh, an investor perspective and, and certainly from an industry perspective and growth. Um, it hasn't, there hasn't been a lot of positive, right? And so there is a big degree of uh, increased negative experiences and perception in the domain that is going to be felt and seen in the industry for, for many months to potentially uh, years down the road if things don't improve, if there isn't a substantial attack on improving the, the environment for which these folks are living, and which I've talked about in past videos, it's, when it's okay, it's okay, okay to provide workers uh, much more capacity of wage, but don't forget the employer, right? Don't forget the employer, right? What, can, what are you also doing on, this, on the, on one hand, you're helping the workforce, on the other hand, how are you doing, how are you helping the worker? Are you providing streamlined services? Right? Are you doing something specifically to help that plant move their product to the port? Right? Are you providing expedition in, in that business process? What are you doing to help them while at the same time you're making it difficult to work for them? And that's my own, that's my main gripe is that yes, let's help the worker, but you can't forget the employer. Yeah, they got money, but that doesn't mean they're gonna stick around because again, if you're not doing things to help them, they're not going to want to stay here, right? So in terms of analysis, it goes, it goes without saying, um, if, you're, if you're doing business with Haiti, in Haiti, it's, it's, always to, it's always important to predict the unpredictable, i.e. having a, 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 a fund <laughs> put aside um, to help get over um, potential patches of unproductivity for various reasons. And additionally, it's, it's critically important to network as much as you can uh, across all levels, um, across all levels, because when things hit the fan, it's, it's going to be really the network that you have is going to get you out of it, right? So I think that's where I'm going to stop today, right? We're, as you know, Monday to Friday, we're, we have bring news and economic issues and questions and concerns to you, and also we talk about how potentially to overcome them. So again, if you like what I'm doing here, give it a like. Subscribe. I'm a talker. I'll, I'll chat back. I'll, I'll hit you. I hit that response. Folks already know I'm responding to every comment that I can, right? Subscribe. Hit that notification. Share it to someone who you feel would appreciate this information. This information. And until we're back at it again, we'll be back at it again.